Hi, my name is Goddess Norathiles and my pronouns are they, them, she, him. And today I'm going to talk to you about someone who is very, very important to the LGBTQIA black and brown community, ladies and gentlemen and queers. I present to you Tracy Africa Gail Norman. Tracy Africa was born December 15th, 1952, and she was born to a fabulous mother and a father in Newark, New Jersey. She has a little sister. When Tracy was about five years old, she knew that she was different from the other kids, that she didn't feel normal. That's how she described it. She would play with her little sister's toys and she would also comb her sister's hair as a baby. And she also wore dresses in her private time. She said that when she was in junior high, that when her dad would work late shifts, that she would dress up in women's clothing. Throughout high school, she didn't tell anyone that she was in the wrong gender. She didn't dress as her true self. She dressed constantly as a male presenting person. It wasn't until she graduated high school, she said she was sitting on the steps of her high school and she handed her mom on her diploma and she said mom I'm trans and her mom said girl I always knew and I'm gonna love you anyway and I'm gonna be here and I'm going to support you her dad however had a different sentiment Tracy's parents divorced when Tracy was about five years old when her dad left he didn't really check in he didn't really come back and he really was not taking any interest in her life her mom was this foundation of support a strength of nurturing for Tracy, regardless of her gender. Tracy was walking around in downtown Newark and her friends come out of this shopping store and they recognize her. They're like, oh my God, Tracy, you look so amazing. You look fucking beautiful. When they knew her, she was not yet presenting as female. And so when she saw this, she was like, she felt really affirmed and they told her like, hey, you should be a model. And so she was like, I, okay. <laughs> so she thought, about modeling and she took it seriously and she would go to the fashion institute in new york city and the way that she got in she said that she was a student there when she would go in there they would have um designers who would show their garments on the runway and then she would watch the models and see how they would walk on the runway so she would be like learning and then one time she went to the fashion institute and she saw that there was a group of black models all kind of surrounded next to the elevator she went over there and she went with them into the elevator she went up the elevator with them she said when they went right she went left and she went ahead and went you know followed them followed suit <laughs> and they went into this room and they were handing their headshots to these people and it turned out that it was a um, casting call for Vogue Italia she goes to the photographer and he was like what's your name and she says Tracy Norman and he's like okay um, you're beautiful uh, like let me get your photo <laughs> why am I saying this like it's a pickup line like hey you beautiful let me get your photo you don't I think he was professional <laughs> two days later he calls her and does an editorial she finds out later it's Irving Penn who was a famous photographer of that time who uh, shot a two-day two-page editorial of Tracy Norman. This was her first gig. She was making $1,500 a day right off the gate. <laughs> and um, so she became a steady working model from then. At the time, she was signed with Zoli Agency, which was one of the leading modeling agencies of that time. And she modeled throughout the 1970s. She worked steadily. She was working for Ultra Sheen, Avon, Essence Magazine as well. Finally, she became the face of Clairol. She became the face of Clairol Box 512 Dark Auburn. It's 1980 and she's hired for the second time for Essence Magazine. It's for a holiday issue. So she's on set and she says that when a director asks her to conjure a certain character when she's on set, she gets a certain tunnel vision, okay? Like she's very focused, she's very in character. And she notices that from her left, there's some negative energy coming in and she loses her focus. And the photographer notices and he's like, okay, go ahead and take a break, have a seat. And when she has a seat, she glances over and she sees it's this hairstylist. Now the hairstylist was talking with Tracy earlier that day when he was doing her hair 
and he was asking her all of these leading questions and she was like why is he asking me all these questions did she know this person and that person it was strange because she actually did know these people but she was like i'm gonna act like i don't know these people because i don't know what this guy is trying to do so she sees that he's over there talking to the client he outs her as trans to the client. This was extremely disheartening for Tracy because she was on a set for black bodies to empower black bodies. The hairdresser was a black gay man and like she's a part of the community. So it was like a double whammy for her to be on the set and to be outed by a gay person. Tracy says that back during this time, gay people were highly venomous towards trans people. This is an example of that venom that they would spew towards trans bodies. And that's when they shut down the photo shoot and they say, it's okay, we're gonna wrap and you know, you can go home now. She calls the next day to her agency and they say, we don't have any work for you. We don't have any work for you. She said that was basically the end of her career. Her friend Douglas says, very much helped her out of that deep depression. And she said she didn't even know that he was helping her. He would always feature her in his runway shows because he was a fashion designer and in his editorials. And he was able to give her the confidence that she needed. Her mom had always stood by her side and had always believed in her. Tracy went to Paris and she lived there with two other of her friends in a hotel. When one of them would work, the other ones would try and look for jobs, but they were basically switching off uh, of taking up the bill. While Tracy was there, she worked with her friend as a background singer for this artist named Ravel and they traveled around and through that she got a modeling job and she said by that time she was already a size 12 and so she had to go all the way down to a size 4. She said that she had a diet of hot tea, water, and popcorn. When she got to the photo shoot that she had to lay on the floor and squeeze herself into a pencil skirt, she looked fierce. Even though she was out of the modeling community in New York, she was still trying to bring trans visibility to the forefront. You can see letters that were sent to her on her Twitter page from Playboy. She sent in her photos to Playboy and Playboy had said that they didn't have a space for her. She also wrote to Oprah. The letter has the Oprah signature and Oprah said that they were going to forward her information to the producers, but they never got back to her. When she came back to the United States, she still was not able to have that same lucrative career that she had before she was outed. She said that one of her biggest regrets was leaving Paris. She had always said that it was better to be poor in Paris than to be poor in Newark. Now, she was a part of the ballroom community before she had an amazing career as a model, but they weren't so kind to her. She says that it's because that she was from Newark and she was trying to be in the ballroom scene in New York. She finally goes back into the ballroom scene. They welcome her with open arms. She becomes the mother of House of Africa. That's where she gets her name, Tracy Africa Norman. In 2001, Tracy Africa was inducted into the Ballroom Hall of Fame. And in 2016, Clairol, remember how I said that she was the face of Clairol back in the 1970s? They called her back and they said that they wanted to do an editorial with her as the center of the story. They wanted her to be the face of their nice and easy color as real as you are campaign. The company stated that they were so honored to bring Tracy back as a woman who no longer has to hide her truth. They wanted to focus on the confidence that comes when you are able to embrace your truth. And of course they were talking about hair color because it was still a campaign. <laughs> Tracy went on to be the face of Harper's Bazaar. Janet Mock and Laverne Cox speak about her as being the trailblazer. When I hear about her story and I hear about Tracy Africa's legacy, I can't help but to feel proud that we were able to have someone who was living their truth so loudly and so in the mainstream. Tracy says, as a word of advice, when faced with an opportunity, walk through the door. Don't let it pass you by.
Thank you for watching Black History and Drag. Please do not forget to like, share, follow, and even save. Do you know that they have a save function? I just found that out like two weeks ago. It helps to get the knowledge out there because this is some tea that you need to drink for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Thank you so much for watching and have a great Sunday.